Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to tie this fly and it's the fly that I made I just made a short video about how to make those legs so I'm gonna, I'm gonna expand and do the video, proper video for the whole fly uh, so it's a very small fly, it's a general imitation of those dark mayflies it has a nice little hot spot here made out of flesh nice legs that are sticking out perpendicular to the hook that I believe are better than legs if you just place them like this uh, the water current can just stick them along the body and like you're not having any effect there but if you have them uh, extending perpendic perpendicular to the hook shank I believe that those slight currents can move them and it can look more lifelike to the fish so without any further ado let's hop into time materials wise I'm using coctelion for the tail golden wire for ribbing, turkey uh, barbs for the body, squirrel mix stubbing for the thorax, some flesh for the flesh cover, uh, orange thread obviously and golden bead, hook is size 14, legs are partridge. Uh, I'm just gonna place the hook in the vise. Now uh, many of us, me included, believe that uh, pheasant tail has sort of magical properties which may be true but may also not be true uh, I think the turkey barbs are also a, a amazing materials so I'm gonna I'm gonna use them in this one so I'm gonna start fly in a regular fashion but instead of making a thread foundation I'm uh, and then applying some some materials I'm gonna s immediately add tail because tail is not uh, having any pressure on it so it's uh, like no one is going to pull the tail out so it's okay if you just do it like this so spin your bobbin holder counterclockwise make your thread jump into your fingers catch tailing material on the top of the hook shank tighten as you go upwards to prevent pushing materials away from you and then you reach a certain point on the hook where you want your uh, flight to end or body to end you can attach some wire for wire I'm using a set gold and this one is XS I'm gonna place wire on the far side of the hook so when I make my first rep I'm going under the hook and then over the barbs meaning that I'm going to miss and not displace the, the tails I'm just gonna place it on the far side of the hook, place my thread where I want it, and then go here. Now, I'm not going to cover anything else yet. I'm just gonna catch my next material here, and it's turkey barbs for, from the turkey feather. Same as you would do with pheasant tail, I'm doing with those barbs. Again, Twist bobbin holder counterclockwise, make it jump, catch your material. Now, you will notice that there are like a lot of materials at the end of the hook, so meaning that I will compensate a little bit for it later. You need to compensate here, you need to make that taper proper. Not too much, make it level, it's also okay. Now, let me see what's happening here. Now, I need some place, some room for the thorax and I need some room for the legs and the cover, wing case cover and so on and so on. So, I will make taper up until here because the rest of it is going to be thorax and it's going to be thicker, of course. So, as you can see, it's already thicker. Now, in the opposite direction that I was wrapping thread, I'm going to wrap turkey barbs. I'm starting them here near the tail as you can see so I'll just I pull them back a little bit and then I'll just start slightly overlapping or in touching turns but I'm usually start slightly overlapping those barbs okay here I'm satisfied I'm gonna catch it one two reps and two locking reps don't need more Now, 
The reason why I put wire on the far side is that I can go under and immediately start wrapping over the barbs, meaning that I'm not touching the tail, again resulting in not displacing tails. And here I just add a couple more wraps of wire. Uh, you don't have to. Sometimes I do it, this is like locking, You may, uh, if you saw me doing catching over the wire and then folding wire back and then locking with thread over it. Now I have my base over here, now I need to attach flash. You can also if you want attach flash and then some wing case material if you want proper wing case but I don't think it's super important so I'll just put uh, flash material. And flash material is Vivas and this one is I think small there is no label anymore. Again, as whenever you catch the material, twist bobbin holder counterclockwise, so it jumps into your material, see, it's not running away, and then make a wrap, pull tight upwards, pull tight upwards, pull tight upwards, upwards, and don't let it push your materials away from you. Now, I have enough room to work with my legs over here. This is the idea, because I'm not doing it in a V shape, I'm not cutting V out of partridge feather. I'm just taking a couple of barbs from one side. Well, it's not a couple, it's several. Okay, so as you can see, okay, I need to move the flash, counter spin the bobbin holder, and then thread will jump into your fingers. And it is important to do this away from tungsten because if you're too close to tungsten it will push barbs more and it's more difficult to control them. So one, tighten up, tighten up two. That's it, you don't need more. Check now if the length is as you want it. This one is on the long side so I'll just back up one, pull, and then again two reps is more than enough for the start. Now I know exactly how many barbs to take by looking at the feather. I know how much is missing. So I'll just even up everything here. Now you want your barbs to be towards the hook eye and then you want them slightly longer than the previous barbs. I'll do pinch and loop now and then I'll just check is everything okay and I'll go back. Now with barbs locked in place I can cut the excess here and very fine tip scissors are obviously very important for this step because you can cut those barbs pretty close. The butts that you can see are definitely going to be covered with dubbing. For dubbing I'm using dubbing squirrel mix that I made so I'm gonna just take super tiny amount of dubbing here and then place it around the thread make a relatively tight and thin dubbing noodle slide it towards the hook and as you can see it's very thin so I want more control and by having more control I can make more accurate positioning of the thread and everything else I can shape up thorax better and because I don't need this dubbing to be super buggy I already have legs made out of partridge that's why I don't need spiky uh, dubbing you can use any dubbing for this purpose actually okay now I'll go one two or three wraps or whatever you need towards the band to cover buttons to also cover the and then Watch how I apply pressure. I go soft and then up. And then if they start running away from you, you can still manage them and squeeze them so they so they don't displace much. Okay. And that's it. Make one or two wraps in front of them. Let me see. And as you can see, I'm sliding it down the tungsten. Now, 
always slide the thread in this moment down the tungsten because it's the most accurate positioning of the thread that you can have. Okay, it's just one wrap as you can see, but I don't need more. There is this little stub that I left. Now, with flat thread, make your web finish. You can do it either with web finish tool or with your hands. So I do one with web finish tool and then you can manipulate those legs if you want a little bit. But notice that I'm sliding the thread all the time down the bead. And then, okay. Now if I want them more to the back, I'll just make one wrap to position everything where I want, like so. Let me try to demonstrate that for you. So you can just pull and make this wrap. Okay, okay, and then everything is evened up. Release the pressure here. And, okay, that's it. Nice and neat. The only thing left is to cut away these hairs because I want to add just a tiny little drop of UV to cover this flash and make it pop out a little bit more. Okay, and just a little drop on the top. And when I do that, I try to cover a little bit of barbs and the knot as well to make it nice and round. Okay, I'll add a little bit more. And because if it's nice and round, it will reflect light better. You can add additional quantities of. Uh, of UV if you need, of course. So if I want more, and I do, because this one doesn't look so good, as you can see, I want it nice and round, but not too round, don't obstruct the hook, hook gap. Okay. Now this is what I want. After you cured it with UV light, your nymph is ready for fishing. And this is size, four, size 14, but you can see that I didn't go all the way. So this is relatively small fly now. This is the body itself is what some seven millimeters long. If you count in the bead, it's again less than one centimeter. It's around eight millimeters here. So it's not a big bug. Uh, I cannot say that I know, that I know how the the fish will look at the fly. I mean, if they don't care about hook hook bend, hook point, and everything, and they don't maybe care or they care about the bead. I don't know how the fish see those things because, in my opinion, everything matters. Every the, the whole size matters. So I I think that fish do see the hook bend. And everything and uh, but they don't care for some reason uh, because the the rest of the flies buggy I guess and that's why they eat everything um, some long time ago a friend of mine like was making uh, super detailed flies and the other friend said like if the fish they don't care about the hook protruding out of uh, uh, flies ass why would they need to care about like number of ribs or number of legs or so many other things? So I do think that it's not super important to be detailed. But I do I also think that it is very nice to have pretty flies if you want to make them of course and fish them. If you don't want to, it's also okay. If you want to make something scruffy, uh, crazy looking, it's also great. And literally next to me, there is a box with flies. And one of the flies is exactly ugly looking fly. And I'm, I made it. I mean, it's ugly. It's like functional. That's it. It's Yavi bead. It's super heavy. I need one. I made it for certain 
uh, for certain situations and that's it so guys thank you very much for watching if you like this video please give it a like share subscribe see you next week